it's unboxing time again and i'm wearing rubber gloves because this carton was delivered just moments ago and until i get the inside carton out i don't want to take any risks that there might be any virus on the outside of the box so i'm going to open this box up and as i open it um i'll explain to you my thinking behind this box within a box okay i'm going to adjust my camera all right let's see flip this over onto the counter it's a little bit heavy take this out and i'll put this outside to decontaminate okay now i can take my gloves off And throw those in the trash. First thing I see is a book. Juicing for beginners. It gives you an idea of what's inside this box. Put this right side up again. Isn't this exciting? Yeah, I'm looking at the shipping labels on the box now I said I was going to explain to you where this came from or why so I'm going to move it back here and then it's got a handle <laughs> oh that fits tight There it is, a Breville, the Big Squeeze Juicer. All right, let me get rid of this box. And then I said I would explain to you what's going on here. What had happened was I watched a documentary, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead by Joe Cross. An Australian who put himself on a 60-day juice diet, juice fast, just drank juice for 60 days. I'm not going to do that because I'm not sick. I'm nearly 70 years old and I'm not taking any medications. And for being 70 years old, as far as I can tell, I'm not nearly dead. So two out of three ain't bad. There's the um, owner's manual, which I already have in PDF format, and I've been through it a couple of times. And personally, I think it's not a very well-written manual, but there isn't a lot of difficulty here. This is probably the base unit right here, and then some. Yes, it's the base unit. I'm going to slide this box out. Unbox it first. And what do we got in here? This is, okay, these are the two containers that come with it. One is for the um, stuff, the waste that will come out of the juicer. After the produce is ground up so that's the little catch basin and this little jam here with the handle on it right there the handle this is where the juice and the pour spout this is where the juice is going to end up I'm gonna set that inside of that and put it over here because the instructions say, put that down there, to wash everything before you use it. Let's see if I can get this base out. It's kind of heavy. Ooh, uh, must have a pretty good motor in it. 
put that down there. This isn't empty yet. It is now. And this is the auger. That's what's going to grind things up and pull produce down to be pressed and juiced and so forth. Uh, some people call this the screw. Most of the time I've heard it called the auger. That has to be washed. Okay, this is the base. This bag fits kind of tight. There we go. There we go. All right. This here is the juicing bowl. You have to pay attention to the orange dot because that's how things get lined up. So, what does this thing say? Remove before use. Well, I did it. And then this is a little um, it's kind of a scraper. It's got silicone blades in there, soft silicone blades. And I think of this as more like a squeegee. It's going to squeegee the inside of the juicing bowl um, as it's making its juice. And the juice is going to come out here. It's got a stopper on it that you can open. And this thing is removable, which I'm not going to do right now. <laughs> and then this is where the um, stuff comes out from the produce. That's going to all be washed. And this is the base. Nice heavy base. Must have a pretty strong motor in there. What else have we got? That's just packing material. Another box. And it looks like this big box is empty. Put that down there. Let's see what's in this box. Where do I open it? Over here. There it is. Some packing material. This is the pusher. You use this to push fruit and uh, vegetables down into the auger when you're working with it. Again, wash that. Big toothbrush. And this is for cleaning out the screen, which I'm, it's going to be, this is the screen right here. So this is where the juice goes in and then it gets filtered out through the holes in this. And this brush is used for cleaning the screen. You have to clean this every use. You don't want to let juice, I mean, um, produce bits dry in the screen. That'll affect the ability of the juicer to work. Again, it's got an orange dot on it, which will tell us how to assemble things. Okay, this is the hopper. It's got a lid in the, t I mean, a, a little there it is. It's got a little um, latch there in case you don't want to leave this open. You can just put your carrots and so forth, celery, smaller pieces of fruit and vegetable can go through here. If you want to use this, you can put even a whole apple in there. I don't know that I would do that, but this has to be washed. But this is the hopper that sits on top. And again, orange dot. Actually, two of them to align and then to lock. We'll get to that in a moment. I'm gonna wash that. That box is empty. And this thing here is another cleaning brush. Here, the brushes are on the inside. And what you do is when you're cleaning this, you use the toothbrush to do the inside, and you use this to clean the outside. And then you can hear those brushes, those bristles, pressing against the screen to screen it, to clean it. Or you could just use this. Um, it's up to you. But they give you this as a cleaning tool to help keep it clean. All right. I've got to 
wash my parts and then I'll be able to assemble this. I'm ready to start assembling here, looking things over. I tried to wash these pieces and dry them as well as I could with paper towels. Seeing little droplets of water here or there, but that should be all right. Okay, this fits on the um, central post, orange dot, and then there's an alignment arrow down here. There's a lift, says lift on the base. Align the lift arrow and the alignment arrow, and then put the squeegee in there. This can go in any which way. It doesn't really matter. There's a gear teeth thing inside here, and then there's a gear turner down there. So just make sure it's seated in there all the way. And then this is the screen for filtering the juice. You want to gently just push this down all the way in. Again, lining up the orange dots. That appears to be locked in place. Feels secure. Get the auger in place. This is the trickiest one because you're going to make sure that it's down all the way. All right. Oh, and while I'm doing this, let me tell you what my plan is. Oh, this pin up top is going to align with a white um, little hole in the center of this. It's easy to see through the side of the hopper. And again, the, the um, alignment uh, dot here, there's an alignment dot and a lock dot. You align the alignment dot with the dots on the base. Make sure that that pin is in. And then you twist it clockwise and it locks. Okay. And just to explain what my plan is, oh, and then your catcher for the um, juiced produce and then the little thing that's going to catch the um, juice. My plan is not to do a juice fast. I don't want to do that. I want to just do a um, juice often, maybe once um, every other day and have juice once in a while. I like the idea of fresh juice and I want to do enough juice that I can have a a container of juice, maybe 12 to 16 ounces, fluid ounces, for myself. And then another container that I can use for making smoothies later in the day. Well, why not just make smoothies? Well, you need liquid to make smoothies. And what do you use? If you buy juice, it doesn't have the nutrients that fresh squeezed juice has because it's been pasteurized. It means it's been heated. The enzymes have been destroyed. Some of the vitamins have been destroyed. The best way from what I've read in the books that I've read by doctors, the best juice you can use is juice that you've squeezed yourself. So there it is assembled. Let's see if I can show you it with the top. So there it is. And then the plunger, which is washed, that goes in there and that will be used for pushing the fruit down in. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to weigh out some fruit. This bowl has a maximum capacity, the juice bowl in the bottom, this here, a maximum capacity of 13 and a half fluid ounces or 400 milliliters. So you want to watch that closely because if you don't, you can overflow the bowl and get juice on the base of your machine. And if I understand correctly, one pound of vegetables and fruit on average will give me about 13 and a half to 14 ounces. Um, let's say 12 to 14 ounces of juice. And I'm going to be doing a mostly vegetable juice from some of the books that I've read. They say don't do all fruit because it's all carbohydrates. It's sugar. You end up with a sugar bomb. Do like 80% uh, vegetables and then 20% fruit. So next I have to wash my vegetables so I can get those ready to juice. I'm ready to start here. So on off button is here. Down is just to do backwards in case the um, 
machine jams the red light is on it because it's plugged in so let's see I'm gonna put a piece of cucumber in there first and then start it grinding you can hear how quiet that is this is some spinach and some parsley Italian parsley going to use the plunger to push that down in there squeaky squeaky I'm getting the leaves in first because I'm thinking that'll help to um, the fruit that'll follow and the vegetables that'll follow will help to push any of that out those leaves Got a half of a lemon here, but before I do that, I'm going to put some celery in there. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Watching my juice level. And from what I understand, this stuff that comes out is pretty dry, and it is. It feels fairly dry. Some more celery. These are four stalks of celery. And this is a masticating juicer. There's like three different kinds. There's the centrifugal juicer that spins really fast. Supposedly those create heat. And um, a little bit of ginger. Some more, some more um, cucumber, and the heat can kill the um, enzymes that are in fruit and vegetables. Whereas this won't. I'm going to put the apple in using this other shoot. I'm using half of an apple, and then more. Celery. No, that's not celery, that's cucumber. Lemon is the one thing you can put in there without having to peel it, it says. Come on, there you go. And then, I think that's it. I'm watching my juice level. It's really up high so I'm gonna pull off some of this juice look at that green juice I'm gonna reverse this and then try again to get that lemon to go down out some of this boy it's nice and quiet that's the one nice thing about having a, a stopper on this spigot here this juice spigot is you can leave it closed the mixer inside those um, squeegee blades will mix your juice together so it's already pre-mixed and then when you pour it out you have your juice all right next step is i'm going to clean this up and see how difficult or easy this is to clean and then we'll come back and taste the juice let's see what i got here i saw a little bit of separation looked like some pulp was floating to the top so that's okay you get some fiber Let's see how much juice I got here. And by the way, cleanup went very quickly. If you're one of those people where you won't buy anything unless all the parts go into an automatic dishwasher, that's a deal breaker for you. Don't buy this. Breville recommends you hand wash everything. So that came to about 14 ounces, it looks like. So very close. Just over a pound gave me just about 14 ounces all right I got my straw here 
going to see what that tastes like. Okay, one thing that I want to mention is, is when it comes to cleanup, forget about the brushes that they give you. Get a good safe, and I mean safe, scouring sponge. This has a plastic, like, scratchy surface on it that's good for non-stick cookware. You don't want the kind that'll ruin the cookware, that'll cut metal. You want a soft plastic but scouring sponge. This worked very effectively for cleaning out that filter bowl. All right, let's see what I got here. I'm using glass uh, so you can see that I really am tasting this. I'm not faking it. Let's see what I've got. Actually, it's not that bad. It tastes like vegetables. It's only a tiny bit sweet from the apple. I can taste the apple in there, but I can taste the celery. I can taste the cucumber. can't taste the spinach. Um, it's got a very... I mean, I've never had fresh juice like this. And the only green juice that I've had, I've bought those bottles at Costco. Um, very sweet. Again, it's a sugar bomb and virtually no nutrients compared to fresh squeezed juice. So this is actually, I mean, I could sip this. Throw some ice in there. Let me do that. Hold on a second. Got my ice bucket out. Gonna put some ice cubes in there. That'll cool that down. Be a nice refreshing drink. Cold would be really good on a warm day. I have never tasted anything like that before. It doesn't taste vile. It's not something I would crave, at least not yet. But the only thing I can think of is it's got to be good for me, right? It's got to be good for me. I don't know what to call this. I just kind of look at a lot of videos on YouTube and kind of selected what I thought would be effective. I think I mentioned earlier the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 vegetables, 20% fruit, and it's going to be a little bit iffy when it comes to some vegetables that you sort of treat like fruit, like there's sugar in carrots, there's a lot of sugar in beets. So although they're vegetables, they're, they're sort of treated like fruit because of the sugar in it. <laughs> See, I could sip this um, during the afternoon. Especially if I was thirsty. Because that seemed like it would be really, really good for um, satisfying thirst. Again, what my plan is, is not to do a juice fast. No. Um, but I am going to add more juice to my diet. Maybe I'm thinking, what if I were to make like a double batch in the morning, have some to sip, and then save some juice for making smoothies later in the day. So, and do that for one day, kind of like a mini fast. And then one day, plane going overhead. <laughs> One day, uh, just eating my regular food that I would normally eat, but do this more often. I could easily become accustomed to that. Already that's starting to grow on me. It's actually tasting pretty good. So, okay, excuse me. I have a little more cleanup to do, but that's my Breville, um, whatever it was called, big squeeze juicer i'll put the i'll try to put the model number down there for you with the full name and i bought it on amazon and i paid for this by the way breville didn't send this to me to be reviewed i actually bought this with my own money okay excuse me i'm gonna go and go go enjoy my juice